worship and adore you. I just want to tell you, Lord, I love you more than anything. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. I love you, Jesus. I worship and adore you, just want to tell you, Lord, I love you more than anything. This time, take it from your heart. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. I love you, Jesus. Just want to tell you, Lord, I love you more than anything. Oh, I love you, Jesus. Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus.
give God some worship. Hallelujah. Father, we worship you this morning. Father, we worship you for your goodness. Father, we worship you for your loving kindness. Father, we worship you for your greatness. Hallelujah. We come to give you the worship. Hallelujah. We come to give you the praise. Hallelujah. Father, we love you. Hallelujah. Father, we love you. Hallelujah. We thank you this morning, God. Hallelujah. Father, we ask that you forgive us this morning, God. Forgive us for all of our sins, God. Sins of omission, sins of commission, God. Forgive us, God. Hallelujah. And Father, search our hearts. Hallelujah. If there's any unforgiveness in us, God. Hallelujah. We ask that you teach us how to forgive, God. Hallelujah. Father God, we come to you. Hallelujah. We come to you. Hallelujah. With our eyes, with our hearts open, God. We come to you this morning, God. Father, we ask that you bless our service, God. Father, we invite you in. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We invite you in. Hallelujah. Father, do what you need to be do, need to do. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Father, save this morning. Hallelujah. Fill with the Holy Ghost this morning. Hallelujah. Heal this morning. Hallelujah. Deliver this morning. Hallelujah. Set free this morning. Hallelujah. We ask God that you have your way, God. Send your ministering angels, God. Minister to us this morning. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, Father, send your yoke destroying anointing. In the name of Jesus, have your way this morning, God. In the name of Jesus, oh God, we worship you. Hallelujah. We worship your name. Hallelujah. Come on and give the Lord some worship. Hallelujah. Father, we worship you. We worship you. Hallelujah to your name. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, God, have your way. Hallelujah. Touch our pastor this morning, God. Touch it from the crown of his head, Father, to the sole of his feet, God. Bless the word, God, in the name of Jesus. Anoint him fresh, Father, in the name of Jesus. Have your way, God. Have your way, God. Touch every heart, God. Let us be receptive to your word, God, in the name of Jesus. Bless your preach word this morning in the name of Jesus. Remember the praise team, God. Anoint them fresh, God, in the name of Jesus as they minister to your people. Hallelujah. Anoint the musician this morning, God, in the name of Jesus. Father, have your way this morning. Father, have your way this morning. God, we bless you. Hallelujah. God, we bless you. Hallelujah. Oh, God, we ask that you remember the sick this morning. Remember the shut-in this morning, Father, in the name of Jesus. Remember those that suffer with addictions. Hallelujah. We bind the hand of the enemy. We bind the hand of the enemy. We plead the blood of Jesus against that cocaine demon. We plead the blood of Jesus against that marijuana demon. We plead the blood of Jesus against alcohol in the name of Jesus. We plead the blood of Jesus against nicotine in the name of Jesus. Father, set the captive free, God. Set your people free, Father, in the name of Jesus. Oh, God, we praise your name. Hallelujah. We praise your name. Hallelujah. We thank you for salvation. Hallelujah. We thank you for dying for us. Hallelujah. Oh, God, we thank you. Oh, God, we thank you. Oh, God, we thank you. We plead the blood of Jesus today against anything that will disrupt our service. We plead the blood of Jesus. Oh, God, let your blood prevail this morning. Oh, God, let your blood prevail. Hallelujah. Your blood, hallelujah. Your blood that covers, hallelujah. Your blood that sets free, hallelujah. Your blood that delivers, hallelujah. We plead the blood, hallelujah. We plead the blood, hallelujah. Oh, God, we thank you. Oh, God, we thank you. Father God, we ask that you would have your way, Father. Have your way, Father. Have your way this morning, Father. In the name of Jesus, every heart give the Lord a praise. Hallelujah. Every heart give the Lord a praise. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name, hallelujah. Don't stop worshiping. Don't stop worshiping. Don't stop worshiping. Hallelujah. 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 Have your way. 
way, God. Have your way, God. Have your way. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Amen. Come on, let's give God praise. Come on, let's clap our hands and give God praise. Won't you shout hallelujah? We praise you. We worship you. Look at somebody and say, God is great. And greatly to be praised. Come on, let's give God praise. Amen. Come on, repeat again. For the Lord is great. And he's greatly to be praised. Let the redeem of the Lord say so. If you've been redeemed, shout hallelujah. God is good. Look at somebody again and say, God is in control. God is in control. All of all things. Not some things, but all things. Yes, he is. He's not slack concerning his promise. In Jesus' name. I want you to join in. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. All that is with him. Bless his holy name. Yes. We love you, oh God. I will bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all that is within me, bless his
You are Alpha yeah. and Omega. We worship you, our Lord. You are worthy to be praised. You are Alpha. That old generation know that song. And it's moving this old way. Yeah. If your soul's not anchored, right. you'll surely drift away. Come on, clap your hand. Come on. Let us storm out on the ocean. And it's moving this old way. If your soul's not anchored, Jesus. You will show me just the way Oh, the storm out on the ocean And they move in this way Come on If your soul's not angry, Jesus You will show me
lies truth in born always. Sooner or later. Sooner or later. Works in my favor. It's turning around for me. I don't know about you. Yes. But it's turning around, turning around. It's turning around for me. Come on, everybody say Give God praise. Yes, sir. Turn it around. Turn it around for me. I need somebody up in here to look at your neighbor and say it's turning, it's turning. Come on, look at your neighbor and say it's turning, it's turning. It's turning around for me. It's turning around for me. It's turning around. Oh, I don't hear nobody talking. It's turning around for me. It's turning around. Sooner or what? Sooner or what? Sooner or what? It's what? It's turning, it's turning, it's turning. And let me tell you something, it ain't doing no 360. It's just making a pivot. Come on up in here. It's just making a pivot. Your finances might look crazy, but it's about to pivot. Come on, I preach that right there. Your health may not look like it should right now, but it's getting ready to turn. Anybody need something to happen in your body this morning? If you need something to happen in your body, I want you to lift up your hands right now and say it's turning right now. Oh my God, it's turning right now. It's turning by the blood. It's turning by the blood, by the Spirit of God. It's turning right now. Because He's going to perfect that which concerns you. He's going to make it right. He's going to make it right. So we have an opportunity because we get to see before it happens in the word what God says is going to happen. So we don't have to wait for it to happen. We can act like it done happened already because really in God's time, he's not bound by time. He's in eternity. So in his time, it is already happening. And so if we're his sons and daughters, and we are, then we can praise him for a miracle right now. We can bless him for a miracle right now. We can bless him for a miracle right now. Come on, 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 come on. You gotta prime that B3. You gotta prime them drums. Help prime the saints this morning. Come on, let's help prime the saints this morning. Come on, you gotta pump your wealth this morning. I can't pour no water in you because you got water inside. You just got to prime that baby. How do you prime it? You got to open your mouth and shout hallelujah. You got to open up your mouth and say thank you. Lord, I give you praise. I give you glory. I give you honor. It's working out for me. It's turning for me. It's turning, it's turning, it's turning. It's turning, it's turning, it's turning. It's turning, it's turning. It's turning by the grace of God. Woo, the grace, the grace of God. Hallelujah. 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 Lord, I'm running, trying to make a hundred. Ninety-nine and a half won't do. Lord, I'm running, trying to make a hundred. Ninety-nine and a half won't do. Put 
some hands together, give Jesus some glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Woo! Hallelujah. Woo! Hallelujah. 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 My God. That sounds like a real church up in here this morning. Anybody come to half church this morning? Woo! Oh, yes, he is. 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 Oh, yes, he is.
put them hands together. Hallelujah. We're just having a little bit of church. That's all. That's all we're doing. Hallelujah. Woo. My God. Hallelujah. Thank you. You know, the, the more you praise him, the better you feel. <laughs> put your hands together. Give him glory. Hallelujah. My God, when we was up in Charlotte, North Carolina, Dr. Anita Phillips, clinical psychologist and saved Holy Ghost filled woman of God, began to expound unto us the African American experience in the church. She started talking about how when they brought the slaves over on the slave ships, hallelujah, because of the suffering and the turmoil, they would be moaning on the slave ships, groaning on the slave ships, praying for deliverance. Fast forward. Slavery is over, church is instituted. And so you see the culture of the African American church, uh, one being an expressive church. Come on, I'm going to preach this on for a minute on that before I get to the word. And so, so, so that's where we get the hand clapping from and we get the foot stomping from. But what I thought was interesting is what she told us is, is that, that in, their, in her clinical studies, uh, on emotional well-being, on mental wealth or mental health well-being, that, that, that um, they, they teach people how to release the impact of the trauma in their life physically. So in other words, you ever hear, like, if you get stressed out, go work out, right? Because you could release your stress on the treadmill or something. Well, she was talking about how, how they teach people uh, uh, through clinical psychology that, that if you do make certain moves in your body or if like you're clapping your hands or if you're jumping and you're doing these things that it releases the impact of the trauma you've been through in your life and then she said we've been doing this all along in the church but in this age now we went from having expressive services to the God is so good hallelujah which we are to worship him. But if you ain't moving, you ain't releasing. Now we got the Holy Ghost on the inside. And what he does is he quickens this mortal body. And, and what she did is she looked at the data of mental health issues in this generation compared to decades ago and the skyrocketing of mental health issues in the church. And related it due to the fact that folks just sit still in church all these days, all in this generation. But see, we ain't got to sit in still church this morning. I don't think we do. I mean, I don't know. You got to let me know. But I think we got a type of church that knows how to release a praise, that knows how to clap their hands. Oh, my God. And learns how to bat their chest and say, yeah, Lord, you've been good to me. See, the stuff of you going to be delivered from your depression and your anxiety when you get up and jump and you shout and you release the praise Woo. And, 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 and my discovery I realized that's why I like to run everybody got their own self expression but I can't stand still because in the streets I was running from the police and the trauma of that still follows me today so I'm not even breaking the law, but when I see the police behind me, I get scared. And anxiety try to creep up on me. But I realized God put a running in my feet when he gave me the Holy Ghost. Because I'm not running. I'm not running from the police anymore. I'm running to Jesus, who is my deliverer. Now, I don't know what kind of praise you got this morning. But somebody need to stand up on their feet and get expressive with God. And release your trauma. With a praise, with a praise, hallelujah, oh yes sir, thank you, release, release, release your stress. Grown on the inside. Ooh, yeah. Ooh, yeah. That's it, that's it, that's it. 
you. I feel a release up in here. Yeah, you about to be delivered this morning. You about to be delivered in your praise. In your praise. Be delivered. In your praise. Be set free. In your praise. Oh, yeah. Thank you. at me like I'm crazy. But I know sometimes at midnight you just gotta wake up and say, oh Lord, I don't know how, I don't know when, but I know you're gonna turn it. Ah, yeah, yeah. Woo! Ooh. Okay, 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 okay. Oh! Disrupt the enemy. Disrupt the plan of the enemy. Disrupt the enemy with your praise. Who shot higher? Oh, yes, sir. You ever saw me in the club acting, acting nonchalant, bro? We used to be in the clubs together, man. I work up a sweat in the club. But you, you know you could disrupt the enemy's plan with your praise. You know every time you cut. You know how many times people done talked about how, how loud I clap my hands? I clap my hands real loud. I'll bust your eardrum if you're in my vicinity. But I'm not clapping my hands to be loud. I'm clapping my hands to disturb and disrupt the enemy. I'm clapping my hands and let the devil know you're already defeated. I clap my hands because he washed me in his blood. My hands got to praise. I don't need it. This is my click track right here. I don't need no click track. I got my hands. Oh, God. See, that's what happens when you're away for two weeks. But I know y'all been here the whole time, so I ain't going to carry you too. I mean, unless you want to praise now. If you're going to do it, then do it. Don't play with me this morning. If you're going to praise him, then praise him. Don't play with me. If you're going to praise him, praise him. Woo! Lord, I praise you. Thank you, Jesus. When's the last time you let a real praise just go to God? Woo! Watch this, hallelujah. Hey, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. I love you, Jesus. Oh, 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 oh,
feet. Oh, oh, oh. He's under my feet. He's under oh. my feet. He's under my feet. He's under your 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 feet. Oh my God, it's getting hot up in here. Take off some of my clothes, not all of them. <laughs> oh, you better praise him. Oh, you better receive it. Woo! Re 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 receive it. Yeah. 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 Woo! I feel good here. You need my towel, bro. You need more than me. Yeah. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord of my soul and all that's within me. Let's bless his name. Who forgives me of all of my iniquities. Who heals me from all my disease. I'm trying to move on. Bless the Lord. Welcome to First Fruits Community Church. The church is loving God and what? We loving people, ain't it? Y'all feel the love of God up in here? I'm sorry you showed up to an unnormal church. I'm sorry you showed up to a church that's weird. I'm sorry you showed up to a church where the pastor stand on the, on the um, chairs in an unorthodoxy way. But ain't nothing orthodoxy about Christ. Ain't nothing normal about Jesus. All right, I better stop because I feel like preaching, y'all. You can't sit in the same room with Bishop T.D. Jakes. You can't sit in the same room with the president of Ghana. You can't sit in the same room with Denzel Washington. You, and all these men and women, God, that came there and ministered to us and not come back and act a fool. I feel like throwing this dog on pulpit. Oh, my God. I feel like going fool. <laughs> and you cannot sit in the room with Dr. Darius Daniels. Who preached the message says he, he didn't see it coming. Talked about David and Goliath. Oh God, I know y'all heard it 50 times, but I heard that story. I don't know how many times, but I, man, I've been feasting off that message, y'all. I'm sorry, I'm just talking. I'm just talking. I just, I don't even know what to do right now. I just feel like, I don't know. I just feel like preaching, shouting, everything all at the same time. I'm telling you, it's time to disrupt the devil. I'm tired of him disrupting us. It's time for us to flip the script and flip our city upside down, flip our homes upside down, and go all out against the devil. Yeah! That's why I don't passively praise him. I radically praise him. Because I ain't trying to get no man's attention. I'm trying to loose up an atmosphere so that you can get a blessing. Mir Somebody say miracles. Signs, wonders. I was standing in the line with a woman at Starbucks in Charlotte, sharing my story. All of a sudden, she starts sharing hers, paralyzed from the waist down, multiple sclerosis. Yet she's standing in line to get a a, 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 a cafe mucolato cappuccini, whatever. But she was paralyzed. She didn't even have to go no further. I about lost it in the line. When the last time you knew somebody was delivered and healed from MS? Hosea. Oh, my God. I feel the Holy Ghost up in here. She started testifying how the Lord gave her everything back. I came back to tell you what she told me. That God's about to give you everything back. God's about to restore to you the years that the pommel worm and the canker worm and the devil tried to take from you and your family. We get it all. So that's the first announcement. That's the first announcement you getting it all back. Look at somebody say, I receive it, 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 I receive it. Oh, shay, hallelujah. Oh, oh, God, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, dirty devil. Try to take what belongs to you. Can't have it. He can't have it. He just mad because he lost it. He just mad because he lost it. 
God is vacating the devil out of your life. Boop. You've been evicted, devil. You've been evicted, Satan. The Lord rebuke you. And every one of his devils up underneath him. I wish the devil would. I wish the devil would. Try to touch my wife. Is you fool? Try to touch my kids. Is you crazy? I wish the devil would. The Lord rebuke you. Even the God of Jacob. My God, I feel like preaching, y'all. That's what happened when you let your pastor leave for two weeks. But can we give glory and honor and praise to God for the first lady of this house? She looked 20 years old, y'all. The Lord touched her like he touched Sarah. Hashe, hallelujah. And my name is Abraham, so I get the benefit from all that, bro. Hallelujah. Can anybody watch the video she released? If you missed it, you missed it. You can go back and look at it. It's on Facebook. Did anybody watch that video? She sat up here recording it. I pushed the button and walked in there because I was working. Came back out. Well, she came in there. I don't know. She was like, it didn't record. She did a whole thing. And it's like, it didn't record. She gave me that evil eye. Well, I'm sorry, baby. Practice makes perfect. <laughs> and she's like, the first one was better than the second. But what that means is she got more to give to you. Amen? Y'all want more from the first lady? She about to give you more, baby. You about to get it. You, you, you ain't got no normal first lady either. You see how crazy I am? Oh, don't get twisted. She crazy too. It's just in her own way. Uh, she flipped scripts on devils every day. Oh, gosh. She ain't even got to open her mouth. She be rebuking the devil, looking at him. She got that black mama look and a Holy Ghost look. Come on up in the sanctuary. That is good. My white mama had them looks too. <laughs> See, we got the boldness on the inside. Don't matter. You could be poking out grits in the gray. Look at the devil. Look. Oh, you trying to come after my chair? Oh, come on. Come on up in here. You know you can speak to the enemy without even opening your mouth. Come on up in here. What you thinking about this morning? You better think on the goodness of Jesus and all oh, he's done for you. Let me stop. I feel like preaching. I've told you. I'm trying to get to the announcements, man. Why you holding me up, man? You looking at me like you want me to keep going. But I got to go to the announcements, man. I think we got Wednesday night service, at prayer at 630. See, you come out to prayer and you're going to be acting like this next Sunday. You're going to be up here with me. I, as a matter of fact, I invite you to come up here and dance with me now. Come on now. No, not right now. I'm just saying. Get a good dose of the Holy Ghost, and you could come up here, and I can't really dance all that good, but I will dance with you. All right. I will dance with your victory dance. I want you out here in prayer. I want you to get 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 in prayer. I want you to develop a lifestyle of prayer. So meet me here Wednesday, 630, in Jesus' name for prayer. Wednesday night recharge, in Jesus' name. What's that? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Look and say, we going to say, say, we going there. Say, we are going there. Oh, I'm, I'm moving too fast. Let me slow down. We are going there. Friday, all of the ladies scream. Now the ladies are coming out. Is it 7 o'clock, right? 7 o'clock this Friday for the monthly intercessory prayer. Y'all come up in here and flip this house upside down so I have to bring the brothers in to repaint and everything, okay? Tear the house up. Ladies, get out. It don't matter your age. Get out here. If you don't know what to say, just say hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. And you're going to leave here speaking in two different languages. Change it. Tell your boss, don't lie, but tell him you, 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 don't tell him you're sick. Just tell him you got to come. That's good. That's good. That's good. That's good. That's good. That's good. That's real good. That's real good. Listen up in here. <laughs> this Easter Sunday is coming. That's what? Next Sunday, right? So we can't dance too much. Okay. 
Because, see, it ain't take long for Christ to come up at the grave, so I ain't going to preach about 15 minutes Easter Sunday, all right? I'm going to be like, he, I'm be like, he died, he got up. Right. Now shout. Yeah. Because we got to go to the gospel fest, y'all. Come on up here. Can we praise God for the gospel fest? Uh, Elder Washington, Lady Washington uh, has been doing this for like, what, 40 years? Tw- 28. Something like that. So I knew it was around that range, 20 to 40. Somewhere around there. They've been saying, you, can, you heard them sing this morning. So he's been through all these generations and he know how to grab all of them. Melvin Crispell is going to be here at Riverfront Park. Listen, what you need to do is you need to go ahead and get your tickets now because it's cheaper. You got your tickets? Look, raise your hand if you got your tickets. I got mine. Oh, we got some ticket gatherers. Amen. All right. I ain't see but like few hands though. Even if you can't go, even if you can't go, just buy a ticket because it helps them do what they're doing. They're bringing all these groups together, the food, fun, all that stuff is going to be on Easter Sunday. So what we're doing is, we're, I'm serious, I'm going to preach really quick. See, that's why I'm taking a lot of time today. But I'm going to preach really quick next Sunday, and we're going to dip out here, go to Riverfront Park, we're going to enjoy it. Amen. BJ going to be working the sound, I think, or doing all that good stuff. BJ in our sound booth right back. That man right there is the man. He's the man. We praise God for you, BJ. We thank, thank you so much for blessing us, man. Uh, but he's going to be there. It's going to be awesome. So get your tickets. Get your, he, they're going to need some volunteers and help too. So just come see them. Say, I can help out. I can help out. And I will release you to leave church or be there to help them out as long as I'm not here by myself. Okay? All right. I need at least 500 people show up and then y'all can go. I'm just kidding. No, seriously, but they do need some help. So I'm going to be preaching. Y'all going to be working. We're going to go down there. We're going to cut up, all right, in Jesus' name. That's good. That's good for the announcements. If, if uh, On the way out, there's uh, some postcards with, like that out there on the desk. So grab one on your way out. It has the website where you can order your ticket. You can download it right online, and it's yours. Amen? Amen. Listen, our ministers and deacons, can we praise God for them in the house? Can y'all stand up real quick? Ella Washington, Minister Tucker, Minister Stover. Praise God. Who else? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Listen, Bill, you can stand up to you. You're a minister now. You're just too late. You know. <laughs> we got deacons in the house. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That's it. That's it. That's it. Listen, we recruiting this morning. We recruiting this morning. <laughs> minister Hicks. Man, we praise God for Deacon Jones, Deacon Johnson. Deacon Fred Wilder had to tip out. Amen. But we thank God for our deacons, man. Praise the name of Jesus. God is so good up in this house, man. It's offer time in the house of the Lord. Let's, let's give this quick because i got to preach something. But everybody stand on your feet. It's really easy to give. you got envelopes in front of you. Or you can text what's on the screen. Uh, text FFCC to, to that number on the screen. And you can easily give your tithes and your offerings. What does God bless? Anybody happy and cheerful? Amen. This is the day the Lord has made. Father, we thank you for the seed that are in the sower's hands that you placed there. Because you said, Lord, that you give seed to the sower. So now as they release the seed into the work of the ministry, I ask that you would please release additional seed into their hands. Lord God, that not only they could continue to bless the work of the ministry, but they can also take care of their families, their loved ones, and be a blessing to others. Lord, inspire them with seed that they may breathe out unto those that have not. Lord God, that they, they may be able to bless others that have not, Lord God. Father, I declare our church is a giving church. I declare that every person in this house is going to have so much to give, they ain't going to know what to do with it. In the name of Jesus, receive it. They are going to receive the seed that you have for them. And so, Lord, open up their faith as they sow this morning and bless them as only you can. In Jesus' name we pray. Let the church shout amen. amen. And amen. As you remain standing, we're going to the gospel of John chapter 1, verses 43 through 51. Hallelujah. Right, hallelujah. Yeah, gospel of John chap- chapter 1, verse 43 through 51. When you have it, say, I got it. And if you don't have it, it will be on the screen. Amen. The day following, somebody say following. The, <laughs> the day following Jesus would go forth into Galilee. And findeth Philip, and saith unto him, Follow me. Somebody say, Follow. follow. Uh-huh. Now Philip was, was of Bethsaida. Philip was of Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. So they're probably in a club together. Philip findeth Nathaniel, saith unto him, <laughs> We have found him. We found him, of whom Moses in the law, and y'all laughing at me, and, and the prophets did right. We found him. 
Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. Mm. And Nathanael said unto him, Can there any good thing come out of Nazareth? You found him, Jesus of who? Nazareth? Can any good thing come out of Nazareth? Philip said, he sucked his teeth. Philip was like, come and see. Look at somebody say, <laughs> sound like y'all kissing each other. Yeah, they looking like they're about to kiss each other. Good God. Come and see. Come and see, bro. Come and see. Jesus saw Nathaniel coming to him and saith of him, Behold, an Israelite indeed, in whom is no guile. Nathaniel says unto him, Whence knowest thou me? Jesus answered and said unto him, Before that Philip called you, when you were under that fig tree, I saw you. When you were under that fig tree, I saw you. Nathaniel answered and says unto him, Now, Rabbi, thou art the Son of God. Thou art the King of Israel. Jesus answered and said unto him, Because I said that unto you, I saw you under the fig tree. You believe me? Believest thou? He says, Thou shalt see greater things than these. Oh, my God, Deke, I feel like preaching. Thou shalt see greater things than these. And he says unto them, Jesus says unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Hereafter you shall see heaven open, and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. Father, we thank you for your written word, your spoken word, your revealed word, your manifested word, your word that brings light and life, your word that brings deliverance and healing and salvation. Father, you are the light in whom is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. So God, I ask that you would expound unto us through the light of your word, the hidden mysteries that are to be revealed to us this morning so that it will change and transform our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Let the church shout, Amen. As you are seated, I want to ask you a question. Can anything good come out of this? That, that just spoke to somebody. Can anything good come out of this? Mm. See, the Gospel of John, I want you to understand, first of all, John himself was uh, called the, be the beloved disciple. He was called the, the beloved disciple whom Jesus loved. He's the, he's the one whose head was leaning on the chest of Jesus at the Lord's Supper, at the communion table, when he was doing the Passover. He's, he, he lived the longest amongst all the apostles. He wasn't martyred. He wasn't killed. He died a natural death. He, he uh, wrote the book of the revelation of Jesus Christ that was authored by Jesus. The last book of your Bible, this is who we're talking about. John is the gospel in which we're reading this morning, his account. Now, I want you to understand of the, there's how many gospels? Four gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. There's four gospels. I'm teaching you now. Four gospels, all right? Matthew, Mark, and Luke, out of the four gospels, it's John who begins to relate what Matthew, Mark, and Luke omitted. Matthew, Mark, and Luke didn't include some things. John put it in the scriptures. John is bringing up the rear from what they left out. Not that they did anything wrong, because they wrote inspired by the Holy Ghost. But John is inspired now to bring up the rear. John is doing what I think it was Ruth did in Boaz's field. He's, he's coming. She's, she went through and picked up the gleaning. So John is picking up the stuff that Matthew, Mark, and Luke left out and putting it in the gospel. Oh, Jesus. And so John gives us what more of the mystery while, while Matthew, Mark, and Luke give us the history. What Luke did was, was settle some facts. Luke, the physician, uh, took the time, says, I'm going to write about what Jesus both began to do and teach. But then John took it on to what? Perfection. Come on up in here. Not laying again the foundation, but building upon what they did. And so uh, he, he, what, what does John, what's John doing this morning? He's leading us further in the veil into the mysteries of what Christ has for us this morning. Say, I'm going. I'm going. Yeah. And another thing I want you to understand about the gospel of John, if you ever study the gospel, as a matter of fact, uh, anybody newly coming into Christ, anybody getting saved, or anybody just want to be restored, renewed, refreshed, go to the gospel of John, because the gospel of John is that gospel. It is that gospel. Uh, it's, it's, it's an antithetical gospel, which means it, it talks a lot about opposites. It, it, it talks about, like, uh, let's see, like life and death. 
See the comparison, life and death. It talks about uh, light and what? Truth and what? Falsehood. Come on up in here. Love and uh -huh, belief and unbelief. Spirit and flesh. Every scripture, the whole theme of the Gospel of John is antithetical, which kind of makes sense when you open up the first chapter of the book and begin to read. Because what we see in the beginning of this gospel are words that are worthy to be written in letters of gold. What we read in Gospel of John are words that, are, that they should have found a way to melt the gold and write it in gold because it is so rich. Because what we have as a privilege to read after the fact, the disciples were discovering in real time. Yeah, yeah. So we open up the Bible uh, into the Gospel of John in chapter 1 because, uh, you know, I heard someone say something. I'm not trying to steal nothing somebody said, but I, I just I feel like I want to say it because it just sounds so good. That, that, that I just gave you content of the scripture. Chapter 1, verse 42 through 51. But the problem with trying to understand content, not understanding the context of the scripture, you begin to eisegete the scripture and not exegete it. You try to make the scripture what you want it to be instead of properly exegeting the scripture and let the scripture speak to you. And if you eisegete the scriptures, you now begin to form a faulty doctrine in your mind about what the word of God says. And then your life and your behaviors follow a faulty thinking of your theology of God. And so what we got to do is we got to take the time to build the context to the scriptures. Come on up in here. I, I can't just give you a scripture and say, okay, now go praise God. I got to give you context so you understand what uh, uh, John chapter 1 verse 43 through 51 is really talking about. So that way you will see what it says. You will understand what God wants you to understand and you will walk accordingly. I'm more of a teacher than a preacher. And so in the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God. And the Word was God. In the beginning was the Word. In the beginning was a thought. In the beginning was a thought. And the thought was with God. And the thought was God. God is a spirit. God, is a, God was thinking before anything was, was, before anything existed. He had a thought. He never not existed. We can't understand it in our finite mind and makeup. But God is the eternal God and Savior. He's the eternal one. So John says, let me tell you about him. In the beginning, in the beginning, in the beginning, in the beginning was the word. The word was with God. The word was God. And then, and then what we hear is that all things were made by him. All things were made by him. And anything you see that was made was not made by anyone else but God. The chairs you are sitting on was manufactured by man, but the materials you are sitting on have been in existence. The atom and the molecular structure of what you're sitting on is held together by the power of God. You can't sit on a chair unless you got faith. You sitting this morning comfortably, but you, you, you got to understand if God said no more, you will fall. Come on, that's revelation right there. In other words, he's holding you up in your mess right now. You got to trust God and sit down in your mess and let God carry you through your mess. Because in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. Hallelujah. Not only that, but watch this. So he made all things. But the Bible says in verse four, uh, in him was life. Talking about Jesus. In him was life and the life was what? The light of men. And the light shines in darkness and the darkness comprehended it not. I got to try to hurry up because I know it's late. So, so, so here we have Jesus in the beginning of John. We see that he's God. In verse 14 says the word was what? Made flesh. Spirit and flesh. And dwelt among us. And we saw his glory. And we saw his grace. And we received the full truth. Is what John is saying. Now he says there's another man named John who bore witness of him. John the Baptist. John the Baptizer. The one that was running around in the wilderness. Hallelujah. With a cloak of, 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 of uh, uh, just, just this nasty clothing. He wasn't he wouldn't taking baths out there. Nothing. He was eating locusts and honey. He was, a, he was just like a homeless man in the wilderness. 
baptizing people by the droves, saying, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. He starts talking about how John is not that Messiah. Now, he just came to bear witness of the Messiah. John showed up at the right time in the right place. Although people didn't like him, people didn't understand him. They wanted to kill him, and they did. But God took something that looked like couldn't be used, amen, and made something good come out of it. Come on up in here. Has anybody ever came from a situation where and you don't look nothing like where you've been from? What you've been through, what you've been in, how you've come through it? You don't look nothing like that. And people say, how in the world could that happen? How can anything good come out of this? God said, I have a man called John the Baptist. As a matter of fact, I, I, I came down here in the flesh to, to meet him first in the womb. So I, 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 I implanted, I conceived myself inside Mary. Mary went to her cousin and hung out with Elizabeth. And when they got together, whoo, the, the wombs leaped. Oh! Because when you come into contact with someone that's chosen by God, something leaps on the inside. When I, when I, I couldn't wait to get back to church, y'all. I could, them two weeks was nice, but I couldn't wait to get back. Every time I see you, I leap. Because I see the good coming out of your life. I see what's about to happen in your life. I see how God is changing and working things out for the good to them that love the Lord. So John the Baptist is born. Jesus is born. John the Baptist is in the wilderness baptizing people, saying repent. And all of a sudden, the Lamb of God comes. He says, behold, the Lamb of God. He comes to take away the sins of the world. I'm not even worthy to put the shoes on this man's feet. I can't latch him. I can't. I'm not even worthy. I'm not worthy to do it. I'm not worthy. I'm not worthy. Jesus said, man, baptize me so I could fulfill this thing. He gets baptized, and then he's led into the spirit to be led into the wilderness by the spirit to be tempted of the devil. Because you know in your wilderness, you're being tempted. Because the devil don't think anything good is going to come out your wilderness. Oh, come on up in here. Anybody ever been in the wilderness? Anybody ever been in a dry place? Wondering, is anything good going to come up out of this? But look at somebody and say, look what happened. Yeah, look what happened. See, see, when I said look at somebody, I'm asking you to be a witness. Just by looking at the person, you understand that something good done came out of this. Because you shouldn't be sitting here this morning, but you are. You shouldn't have a praise on your lips, but you got it. What the enemy meant for bad, God has turned it around for the good. All the way around. Thank you, sir. Hallelujah. And so, you know, what happens when, when God starts working something good out of people that are unexpected uh, of good to come from. When God starts, oh my God, come on, I feel like preaching up in here. When God takes a person, a man or a woman, who comes out of the gutter, who comes out of the crazy life, they may even come from a rich life, but who would have thought this person would be doing this? Who would have thought this person would be doing that? You know you're going to get haters. And those haters are called religious people. They're called Pharisees and scribes that don't understand. Why is he shouting so loud in his mic this morning? Because God made something good out of me. Because everybody used to look at me and say, oh, ain't nothing going to happen that book. Oh, he ain't never going to be this. Oh. And I'd be like, nah, 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 nah. Look what God did with me. I used to hate my name because I got bullied all the time. People called me Abraham Lincoln. And when I got saved, I was like, oh, I got a name better than anybody up in this church. My name is Abraham. Call me Hambone. God is my friend. Middle name is Daniel. God is my judge. It's good when the judge is your friend. Come on up in here. Look at somebody and say, can anything good come out of this? Mm. Oh, I saw that look. You was real about that one. You looked at that person up and down. Anything good come out of this? Ham sandwich, yes. Yeah, something about to come good out your life. I don't know what you've been through. I know some of your story, but you, you about, something good about to come out your life. But let me tell you what happened when this stuff started happening. The religious folks start doubting, wondering, and getting upset, getting worried. Jealousy, envy. So what? Okay, watch this. I want you to see what happens. So, okay, watch. So, so, so John tells us who Jesus is. He's telling us after the fact that when, you know, he didn't know even before he wrote this who he was. But he, by discovering who Jesus was, not only discovered who he was, but discovered himself. 
Oh, my God. By discovering Jesus Christ, by spending time with him, you can learn what's in the word without even reading it, although you should be studying the word, but you can get a revelation just by praying and getting close to God. God starts to show you who he is and who you are. That's the problem with some of us. We see ourselves as what we used to be still, even though God done did a work on us. We still got this mentality that's in our brains because it's been implanted in there over years and decades and even generations. But God told me to tell you, you are more than what you think you are. You need to start thinking about who you are and believe that God is making something good come out of your mess. Looking at you like you ain't a leader. You are a leader. Looking at you like you are not an influencer. You are an influencer. Looking at you, judging you. Can anything good come from that brother? Anything good come from that sister? She the one that I, I saw her. I saw her in them clubs. Why was you out there? Uh huh. See, when you look at somebody and try to judge their their state, you know, don't forget where you was and where you are now. Look at somebody say, Can anything good come out of this? Oh, I could take this for 10 hours. I'm not going to do it. So hear ye the word of the Lord. So after the revelation and all this stuff happens, John the Baptist says, it's the Lamb of God. It takes away the sins of the world. The following day, Jesus goes into Galilee and finds Philip and, and says, follow me. Now, remember, I said Philip was from Bethsaida. What's wrong with Bethsaida, Pastor? Well, it's not a place you want to come out of. Well, you want to come out of it, but most people there are wicked the people in Bethsaida has a curse on them. That's what the Bible says. Jesus says, woe unto Chorazin and woe unto Bethsaida. Because if the works and the miracles and all the stuff that, that I've done was done in there, if, 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 if they, if they would have repented, they would have been blessed. But they didn't even repent because of all the miracles and stuff that happened. They were so wicked. Can anything good come out of Bethsaida? Can anything come out of your wicked culture you grew up in? You don't have to be what you grew up in. You don't have to be what you were surrounded by. My mom used to tell me, you will be what you are surrounded, you, you surround yourself with. If you surround yourself with friends that smoke weed, you're going to smoke weed, and that's what I did. Yes, yes, yes. If you surround yourself with friends that listen to music that ain't no good for them, then sooner or later you're going to do the same thing. But what God is saying this morning is, can anything good come out of that? It's yes, Jesus is the type of Jesus that destroys the culture of which you came up in, brings you into something called kingdom culture, and brings good out of your life. He is not trying to make you happy this morning. He's trying to pull you out your garbage because something good is about to come out of your stuff. You ever throw something away on accident in the garbage that's valuable? What do you do? Jump. <laughs> oh, don't drop a $20 bill in the garbage can. Oh, I think I dropped that thing in the garbage can. I guarantee you, you would dig through the mess to find the blessed. Oh, God is about to dig into your mess. God about to dig into our mess and take our me take us out of the mess, clean us up, and make something good come out of our lives. Because God, it would be a wasted time if we don't do nothing good with our lives. But we can't do nothing good because we're in sin. But when He cleans us, makes us whole, we can do what He calls us to be. Now, watch this. This is what I find interesting. So Philip was not from a good place. He said, let me throw Andrew and Peter up in there, too. They were from the same place. And then Phil was like, well, let me find Nathaniel, because I, I, found, I, found, I found the one that Moses was talking about. Let me, let me go find somebody. Because when God brings you out your mess, you got to tell somebody. I only told a few people my story while I was in Charlotte. She just called me a liar in the church. I couldn't shut my mouth. Every time I had a chance, I opened my mouth and told my story. And I ain't going to stop telling my story because I know what God brought me out of. It didn't look like anything good was going to come out of it. But look at me now. Hallelujah. And praise Jesus. Hallelujah. If God could do it with me, I'm telling you he could do it with anybody. Nathaniel. Nathaniel, we found him that Moses talked about in the law. We found him that the prophets was prophesying about. We found him, man, Jesus of Nazareth. He didn't say, I, I found the word of God. He said, I found Jesus of Nazareth. Let me talk to you about something real quick. People will define you in 
correctly. He wasn't even from Nazareth. He was born in Bethlehem. But he went down to Egypt and they had to come back. And then they, then they resided in Nazareth. But he was born in Bethlehem. See, what will happen is people will look at your past and define you by your past and try to put you in a box. Come on and, and say, oh, this is Chris from the gutter. This is Harold from the side corner. This is Brother Wit from over here. This is Sister So-and-so from over here. No, baby. I was born here. And I, yeah, I may be there, but God is bringing me to here. This was not Jesus of Nazareth. Although he did live in Nazareth, but this was not Jesus of Nazareth because the beginning of the scripture says in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God and the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. But they only saw him as Jesus of Nazareth at that time. So Nathaniel's like, man, can anything good come out of Nazareth? Nazareth only had about 250 residents. Nazareth was a small town. Ain't nobody had no social media following in Nazareth. Everybody liked each other, and it was all crazy. Nothing good come out of Nazareth. Them crazy Nazarites, they don't even cut the hair. Who gonna come out of Nazareth? You said the man, the one, the Messiah, the Son of God, the Lamb of God, the Lion of the tribe of Judah, the, 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 the root and the offspring of Jesse. Come on. It, 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 you said, hold up, you just found him, but he's from Nazareth? You know, some things, let me tell you, this is going to be good for somebody up in here. Some things you ain't even going to be able to explain about yourself. you just going to be like, come and see. I know you defined me by how you used to see me, but come and see me now. Come and see me. Can you, can you come and see me now? Can you come see what the Lord did with me? I didn't do it. Can you see what the Lord did with me? Yeah, how he brought me up out of my Nazareth. So Jesus, Jesus didn't worry about that because he knew who he was. And when you know who you are, you don't have to worry about how people define you. When you know who you are, you don't have to be concerned about how people label you. You don't have to worry about what people say you can or cannot do. Because when you know who you are, you do what you do and you'll be who you be. Look at somebody say, I be. I'm going to be the person God said I am. So what if I grew up poor? I'm rich. So what if I grew up not having an understanding of God? I understand him now. So what if my teacher said this or or if my parents said that? I am who God says I am. I am living proof that God can take the darkness and make it light. Hallelujah. I'm living proof that he can take anything and turn it around. I am living proof. You are living proof. Yes, we are. Yes, we are. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. And so, mm-mm. okay, Nathaniel. Well, you know what? Just come and see. So Jesus sees Nathaniel, y'all. And I'm almost done. Jesus sees Nathaniel coming towards him. Uh-huh. And Jesus says, man, look at this Israelite. He's the bomb. This a real Israelite. This a real man of God. But he wasn't nowhere near him. Or was he? The Bible says, before Abraham was, I am. Jesus said, before Abraham was born, I was there. I was always been there. And so Nathaniel was like, man, what you talking about? How are you going to say this? Like, what are you talking about, Jesus? Like, what do, what do you mean? You don't even know who I am. I think some of us tell Jesus that he does not know who we are. Uh-oh. Come on up in here. Open up your heart. I believe some of us tell the Lord, oh, you don't really know me. Uh, Jesus is like, boy, I know you upside down. Boy, I know you, everything of who you are. Before you were formed in the belly, I knew you. Before you came out crying, I knew you. I already have a predestined plan and purpose for you. And so I know exactly who you are. I know how to get past your addiction. I know how to pull you out your addiction. I know how to pull you out of your thought process. I know how to deliver you from your trials and your tribulation. I know how to break the generational curse over your thoughts. 
I know who you are, Nathaniel. You are an Israelite indeed. Because God doesn't see us as we are. God sees us as who we shall be. And just like John says, light and darkness, just like John says, death and life, just like John says, truth and falsehoods, just like John is comparing things antithetical against each other, God is saying, you see yourself as this, I see you as that. Yes, yes, yes. How do you look at somebody and say, how do you see yourself this morning? Do you see yourself as a woman of God? Do you see yourself as an anointed man of God? Do you see yourself as God sees you? Yes, yes. How can you do that? Well, you got to get in his presence to see. You got to get in his presence to see. Nathaniel said, how do you know me? Jesus said, before Philip called you, when you were sitting up under that fig tree, I saw you. Before you walked into the church, when you was in the club, shaking your behind, I saw you. That's what he told me. I'm just saying, that's what he told me. That's what he told me. Thank God he didn't kill me. But because he saw me, not as what I thought I was. But he saw me as who I am. Yes, amen. Thank you, Jesus. And so, and then what, does, what happens is when you get into his presence like this on a Sunday morning, when you start praying at home and getting into his presence of the Lord, he starts telling you who you are. He starts showing you who you are. And, and see, the problem is, is you keep looking at your weaknesses. You keep looking at your, your proclivities to mess up. And you keep holding yourself back from what God wants you to do because you are, you're seeing yourself not as God sees you. You got to see yourself how he sees you, man. You see yourself as God. You got to see yourself as God sees you, man. As God made you, woman. Don't you dare walk out this church this morning thinking that nothing good can come out of your situation. And nothing good can come out of your weaknesses. Because even the Bible says in your weaknesses, my strength is made perfect. If you ain't got no weakness, how is the strength going to be perfected in your life? Come on up in here. We're so busy fighting our weaknesses instead of just affirming who we are. How often do you affirm out loud to yourself who you are in Christ? Paul says, I'm dead and my life is hid with Christ and God. Paul says, I'm no longer alive to, to sin. I'm dead to sin, but I'm alive to Christ. Paul says, I'm an overcomer. Paul says, I'm a, more than a conqueror. Paul says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Paul says, he that has begun a good work. Can anything good come out of Paul's life? He was killing the Christians. He, was, he had a list of folk that he wanted to slaughter. And God knocked his crazy self off his horse. Uh, transformed his life around. Uh, and Paul said, look at what God did for me. If God did it for me, God can do it for you. He might knock you off your horse. But I'm telling you, something good is about to happen out your life. Something good is about to happen out your trial. Something good is about to happen out of your, happen out of your tragedy. Something great is about to happen out of the stuff you've been through. God ain't looking for normal saints. God looking for some folk that say, Lord, do with me what you will. He that has begun a good work. If God started good in you, you think he's going to back down off his word and, and not fulfill the purpose he has for your life? God started it. We used to be in the streets and you don't start no fight unless you're going to finish it. You better believe it. And you're going to make sure you finish it. Be like, bro, what? Yo, what's up? You want to do this? But some of the folk would do that, and then and somebody else would come on, and they'd be like, that ain't God. God starts, and he finishes. He's the author and the finisher of our faith. If God gave you faith, he's going to give you more faith. Somebody say, I received some faith this morning. I, I received some faith this morning. He's going to give you more faith. He's going to give you more courage. He's going to give you more confidence. He's going to give you more boldness. You're going to walk in it. You're not going to be what you think you are, but you're going to be who God says you are. Then he's going to give you the thoughts so you can think who you are. Come on, man. I feel like preaching up here. I really didn't even get started. I was telling somebody this morning, I miss y'all so much, man. I just want to spend time with y'all. I know it's 1228. I know. Man, I want to hang out with y'all a little longer. I'm serious. I want to let you know this morning. God, no, God want to let you know this morning that something good is about to come out your life. Ain't no way an H-E double polo sticks 
and kissed her. <laughs> Ain't no way. I'm coming out no pandemic and nothing good coming out this. Ain't no way. Our church going to have so many folk up in here and say, sanctify, filled with the Holy Ghost, fire, baptize. Because God didn't put us in our houses just to be like, oh, I'm scared. I'm like, yo, oh, it's about to jump off, boy. He got me in training like Mike Tyson, man, because he know who I am. Something good going to come out of this pandemic. We're going to have folk coming up in this church. They ain't never said they would come to church before, but not because they got a little scared. Hallelujah. God start dealing with them in their homes. They're going to be flooding the church. You better get here early next Sunday. These folk going to pack the pews, and they're going to fill the streets, and we're going to flip cities upside down. We're going to do the crazy stuff for God that people say we can't do. Why? Because something good is about to come out your life. God ain't make you the woman you are with the thoughts you have and the ideas and the vision you have for you to sit there on your bosom to do nothing. Nah, bro. Uh-uh. God is about to raise you up to be the woman you are called to be. Moreover, whom I did foreknow, I did predestinate. And whom I called, I justified. And whom he also justified, he glorified. And what shall we say to these things? What is Paul talking about when he says these things? These things that say nothing good could come out of this. These things that has happened in your life that says nothing good could come from this. What shall we say to these things? What shall we say to these things? If God be for us, 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 us, who could be against us? See, I am persuaded that neither death nor life, I'm persuaded that neither principality or power, I'm persuaded that religious starch, starchy people can't stop this thing. I'm persuaded that these false teachers can't stop it. I'm persuaded that what God said he's going to do, he's going to do. None of these things going to separate us from the love of God that's in Christ Jesus. Something good coming out of your stuff. Something good coming out of your stuff. I already got phone calls last week. Oh, something good came out of this. Something good came out of that. What did you expect? You expect to stay in the place you in? Do you expect? Oh my God! Somebody said no. Nope. Do you expect to stay in the place you in? No. This is the year to pivot, y'all. You heard what my wife said? Your first lady said? She said, Pastor God said, this is the year to pivot, and all hell started breaking loose. Folk, parents died off. People getting in car accidents. Just got in a car accident well, last week, ain't it? Week before, something like that. There she is. She's standing right there. What good could come out of it? Look, if you just look at Sister Tucker, that's the good that comes out of car accidents. Come on up in here. I'm trying to tell you this morning. I can't articulate it the way I feel it in my spirit. But God is trying to shake somebody's consciousness. God is trying to, to, to just rattle your spirit this morning. To get you to understand, baby, ain't nothing but good coming out of this. Can anything good come out of this? Everything good is coming out of this. So what? If it don't look like it. I know what God says. Everybody stand on your feet. Oh, my Lord. Something good coming out of your bad behind children. I can say that because I was a bad behind child. Something good coming out of them, that spouse of yours. Something good coming out of that woman, that man. Something real good is about to happen. That's going to make the devil run. See. See, the devil tried to make your son go to the other side. You know what I'm talking about. The devil tried to get your son to be who he not. The devil is a liar. What good going to come out of that? I'm going to tell you something great going to come out of that. Because we're going to see deliverances that we ain't never seen before. And these folks going to be so on fire for God. It's going to be crazy revival. We ain't going to be able to contain it. What good going to come out of your financial distress? Well, whatever is opposite of financial distress. Come on up in here. 
Well, Google, come out of your sickness. What? Good. What good's going to come out of your crushing? Some anointing going to come out of your crushing moments. But instead of opening your mouth and being normal, you're going to open your mouth and people are going to be delivered because you were crushed and you came through. Come on up here. Oh, my God. Hallelujah. Can anything good come out of this? Yeah. What's the answer? What's the answer? Yeah. What's your answer? Yeah. yeah. What's your answer? Yeah. I don't hear you. What's your answer? Yeah. I mean, shout it to the rooftop. What's your answer? Yeah. Can anything good come out of this? Yeah. Well, you might as well praise him now then. You might as well praise him now. If you know good is coming out of your stuff, then you ought to give God a real great praise. Let me tell you something. More than good is going to happen. Something great is about to happen. Something great is about to happen. I shall not die, but live and declare the works of the Lord, for the Lord is chasing me sore, but he is not giving me over unto death. God is hiding me in a secret place, covering me with his wings. I trust in him. I see what he's doing in my crazy situations. Nothing but good is coming out of your stuff. Shake that devil off this morning. Shake that devil off this morning. Shake your thoughts off this morning. You heard what I said in the beginning. Part of the experience of the people of God is that we are exuberant. We move. And if you want to release your trauma, you need to shake it this morning. You need to physically shake your body or do something to release. Because something good is coming out of your anxiety. Something good is coming out of your depression. Something good is coming out of that stuff that even supposed to be on you. That people told you you got to live with and pop pills for. The devil is a liar. Something good is coming out of this. I'm going to be delivered. Yes. I'm going to be set free. I'm going to be set free. Ah, hallelujah. Because whom the Son has made free. He's free indeed. Free hands lifted. Free hands lifted. Free hands lifted. Free hands lifted. I declare unto you freedom in Jesus. I declare to you that you're coming out this week of your mess. And I, I declare to you this week is a good week. Yes, sir. This week is a miracle week. Receive it. Say, I receive it. This week is a miracle week. This week is a week of favor. This week is a week of anointing. This, this week is a week of restoration. Why, says I hear the Lord say, why do you think too low of yourself? I heard something powerful. You can put your hands down real quick. I heard something powerful. That we're real quick to condemn those that think too highly of themselves. But we never spend time on condemning those who think too lowly of themselves. Come on up in here. We, we, we know the Bible tells us not to think too highly of ourselves. But when we don't think about ourselves the right way, that's a problem in God's eyes too. You got to see yourself as God, as God sees you. Uh, it don't matter where you at. It doesn't matter where you at. Just see God, see you as God sees you. Can you see yourself? Can you see yourself? You are what? Royal? Come on up in here. Royal. Royal. You royal. You are peculiar. No wonder people got their eyes on you. They can't figure you out. They ain't supposed to. They ain't supposed to figure you out. They still trying to figure me out. They can't figure me out. They ain't never going to figure me out. Keep trying. I don't care. Figure God out. Then you'll figure me out. I'm delivered from the opinions of people. I don't care what folks say. I don't. Because if you ain't saying what God says, then I ain't got to even, I don't give you no attention. I don't give you no attention. Don't you let nobody say about you what you know God has not said about you. I don't care if you got to open your mouth in front of them and say, the Lord rebuke you. So what? Rebuke them devils because they ain't got no right telling you who you are if they saying the wrong thing. See, I'm up here telling you who you are, who God says you are. Anointed. 
separated unto God. A king and a queen walking in favor. Listen up in here. I rebuke beggar spirits. You ain't going to have to beg for nothing because you're a lender, not a borrower. You are the head and not the tail. You are above only yes. and not beneath. Your basket is blessed. Your house is blessed. Everywhere the sole of your feet shall tread upon is blessed. Everything your hands touch is blessed. That's why I think I like shaking people's hands so much. I think that's why I like to pray for people so much. Because I know every time I touch somebody, they're blessed. See, that's what the devil tried to do in the pandemic. Try to get us from touching each other. Six feet. Six feet. I ain't gonna do that to y'all. Six feet. Only thing I know six feet is underground. Six feet separate from my brothers. Crazy. I ain't never doing that again. I, I ain't never gonna see you from a six foot distance. I don't. Cause I don't walk in no sickness. I got COVID and came out. Cause good comes out can't kill what God has made alive. Come on up in here. You can't kill no saint of God. We don't die. We multiply. We don't die. We multiply. Even if you physically die, you don't die. Y'all know that? Can't stop this. Like MC Hammer said, can't touch this. Come on. I can go down the line, baby. I know who I am. There was a time I didn't know after I got saved. I knew I was saved, but I didn't know who I was. Ooh, that's deep right there. There's a lot of saved folk don't know who they are. Let me tell you something. When you come into the revelation of who you are, you look like you can't be stopped, sister. Oh, my God. I just saw that in your eyes. You gave me a look like I can't be st- stopped. And it, because you know. <laughs> everything that tried to stop you. Look at you. You here. My, look at you. You here. Everything that trying to stop you. Where you at right now? You right where you're supposed to be. Mm-hmm. You too, man. Young people, y'all where you're supposed to be. Y'all believe that? Y'all believe that? Y'all believe that? Y'all believe God got a great purpose for you? You know who the most powerful people in the Bible were? Do you know who the most powerful people in the Bible were? Y'all. Be me, y'all. I ain't in the Bible. Yeah, but Jeremiah was a young man. God called a young man like you. He said, guess what? You going to tell nations what I say. And can't nobody stop it. Don't let nobody stop y'all from being who God said you are. If you're a dreamer, dream. Okay? You're going to own businesses. Can't nobody tell you can't own no business. You can own whatever you want. You see these Nikes on my feet? I bought them. I don't own them. I don't own Nike. But you know what? I heard you can, if you buy a pair of Nikes, get some shares in Nike. Because then you're buying something you own. A share is a part of a company. And that means you own part of that company. Y'all can own whatever you want. You can do what God tells you to do. And don't let nobody tell you different. You just, come on, boy. You about to preach up here. What would you say? But you just got to work for it. Come on up in here. Come on up in here, sir. Who's this your son? Your brother? Whose son? That's your son? That's your brother. Oh, hey, mamas and sisters, brothers and sisters, whatever, you know, hey, what's up, bro? Listen, that's what I'm talking about. Somebody done spoke something to y'all. That's what I'm talking about. I don't even know y'all, but it's good to meet y'all. Nice to meet y'all. Welcome to First Fruits. Hope you enjoyed the service today. Y'all enjoyed it? Pretty cool, huh? Listen, be who God says you are. Don't let nobody tell you less. And you ain't got to say nothing. Somebody do say something, or if they look at you, they're like, mm. Smile with your pretty smile. Put your hands on self. And then just go be who God says you to be. Because you know what? You know what I found out? That a lot of those people don't know who they are. And so what God does is he shows us who we are so we can help other people know who they are. I'm here this morning telling you who I am so that you can know who you are. That's all I'm here to do. I'm, I'm here to tell you that Jesus Christ made me who I am. I used to be this, but now I'm that. God brought nothing but good out of my life. If he did it for me, he will do it for you. He promised to do it for you. 
and not just you, but your children and your children's children and, and all those that are coming down your pipeline, baby. Everybody that's attached to you, if you just be who God says you are, then you're going you're gonna to be able to change people. All right, I know. That's my fifth closing. I got to go. I feel so good, though. I miss y'all so much. I miss y'all so much. So much. I was talking to Brother Tech in the office. I was like, man, for example, because I, I told him, I was like, I feel so out of touch with all the members. That's what I told him. Did I not tell you that? I said, I feel, I feel so out of touch. With, we got like almost 200 members. I was like, I so out of touch with our members. If they all came at the same time, we would have no room. But it's okay. I'm just saying, I'm like, I feel out of touch. I feel out of touch. And I was like, for example, I was like, when's the last time like Thomasina and Phil was in my office and I talked to him? I was like, hey, I don't know. I was like, I can't. I told him. I was like, I can't remember. Who pulled? Who pulled up? Not one, two minutes later. Thomasina and Phil. Texas. Speaking about Thomasina and Phil, there they are. I'm like, boy, I'm gonna start naming everybody name, cause that's who I am. Come on up in here. Do you know you can open your mouth and it will happen? Oh, shut up in here. No, no, no. Open your mouth in here. Yeah, open your mouth. Do you know? Now, I'm trying to tell you who God says you are. Do you know you can open your mouth and just like God said, let there be, you can do the same exact thing. Everything that is in your life is what you've spoken. Because what you speak is what you think. But I dare you to start changing your thoughts and start speaking differently. And disrupting the process and the progress that the enemy has made in your life. And start opening up your mouth and say what God says. If I can open up my mouth unintentionally and they pop up in two minutes, then, um, Lord, I'm so glad you paid my bills. I ain't, I ain't trying to make this like a prosperity thing, but I'm just saying, we are prosperous. So, Lord, I thank you for paying all my bills. Lord, I, man, Lord, I thank you for my beautiful home. Thank you for my home, Lord, that I didn't even pay for. Thank you. I got a home that I ain't paid for. Yeah. And I talking about up in the sky. Yeah. <laughs> Come on up in here. Thank you for. Now, I love my truck now. I'm going to keep my little hunting truck. That's why I park it out back so, so y'all won't be like, dang, Pastor's suffering. <laughs> I ain't suffering, man. I love that truck. But it got, it got a patch on one eye. Yeah, she got to take a little time to get heated up, you know. But, man, she worked good. I'll be throwing tons of deer in the back of that thing. <laughs> and a turkey. <laughs> but I do thank God for my new car. All right, all right. I thank God for all of the transformed people in First Fruits Community Church. Yeah. I'm so excited about you. I am delighted about your story. Because I see you telling your story as much as I tell mine. We're going to have a church. They're going to they be aggravated, and that's fine. Aggravate the mess out the devil. Yeah, that's right, that's right. Don't stop telling your story. That's right, that's right. I'm not going to stop telling my story. I'm going to be the 100-year-old man because I'm going to be here until the rapture take place. I'm going to be like 100-something years old, and I'm going to be like, Lord, I was facing 77 years in prison. Yeah. It'll be like 77 years ago. Yeah, it was a long time ago. I was facing 77 years in prison, and I still got to praise. I'm going to take off running. They're going to be like, how you running? You got a king. Cause that's what I do. Have I not ran since 1996? I refuse to stop running. That's why I sang the song this morning. Lord, I'm, <laughs> Lord, I'm running, trying to make a hundred. Cause 99 and a half 99 won't do. And a half won't do. Sister Deb, you are who God says you are. I'm so. Did y'all enjoy her prayer this morning? Because she is the good that came out of the bad. She is. What God said I could do. I could do anything through anyone. So she could get up here and pray the whole house down in two seconds. Yes, yes, yes. Some of you going to open up your mouth and prophesy and people going to just receive. Amen. You, could, you are an encourager. Joel Osteen, y'all. I'm, I'm really trying. This is my sixth close. I'm so sorry. Joel Osteen, y'all. I got to chill out with him. I mean, I, okay. I was like 100 people from him. But I, was, I see, I speak what I know is happening. I speak what's going to happen, baby. So I was hanging out with Joe Osteen. And we in worship. Joe Osteen, Joe Osteen, pastor of like a five billion member church or something. I don't know. He got so many folk up in there in the church. I'm like, good Lord. 
This man sitting over there with his wife and his, his mom who had terminal cancer. Yeah, 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 yeah. This woman looked. I was like, ain't no way this woman that old. That woman smiling like, I am who God says I am. <laughs> Nothing but good came out of it. She had terminal cancer. All right. So I'm watching worship go on. And Joe Osteen over there, boo-hoo crying. Bishop Jake's up there introducing him. He boo-hoo crying. I'm like, dang, this man crying. Like, dang, I hope he can preach. He gets up there, preaches, ends the prayer. Halfway in his prayer, the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit hits him. Joe Osteen. The Holy Spirit hits him. He couldn't even talk. Just start weeping, crying. Weeping, crying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Know why? Because he keeps realizing who he is. He was the man behind the cameras. He was the man. Nobody thought he was going to be the pastor. He didn't think he was going to be the pastor. But this man is so influential. And know what he tells us? He's like, I'm an encourager. He's like, give me 20 seconds with somebody. And they're going to leave encouraged and know that God has great things for them. Somebody in here is an encourager. Somebody in here is, listen, I'm just trying to let you know. Nothing but good is coming out of your mess. Amen, amen. That's it. If there be anybody that want to make first fruits your church home, you could come up right now, I'll shake your hands, say, Welcome to the church. I'm your pastor. Here's the first lady. We love you so much. If you don't know, we're crazy, but it's okay. We're gonna take care of you anyway. But if there's anybody that want to make this your church, make this your church home, do it now. Everybody need a pastor, everybody need a flock. Sheep don't need to be by themselves. Sheep don't need to be by themselves. <laughs> Sheep don't say, oh, let me dip and go over here and hang out with this flock for a minute. Let me dip over here and go hang. No, the, the, the sheep know the shepherd's voice. We are the sheep of God, so we must have an under-shepherd like myself that can speak the words of God to the people and so that you can have the community that God wants you to have. So if you don't have a church home and you feel like, you know what, this is it, then come on up. That's a pretty good call, right? Amen. Now, if anybody never been baptized in Jesus' name and you need to be baptized... I want to baptize you this morning. I would love to get in that water right now. Is it hot? It's like 90 something degrees. 98 degrees. I will baptize you in 98 degree water in Jesus' name. If that's you, you want to receive the baptism, then you can come up front right now. And we got clothes you can change into. We don't baptize people in ponds no more. Although I will. Give me a pond. I'll baptize you. I'll baptize you. When Dylan Roof killed all those people at Emmanuel 9, I was down that Saturday with a few of the saints from this church, encouraging, praying for people down in uh, Marion Square. And this, this, um, this young white gentleman rides up on a bike who was an atheist, spent 15 minutes with him, 15 minutes with him, man. And he's like, I want to be baptized in Jesus' name. I was like, are you serious? Because there's a fountain right here, bro. Oh, yeah. He's like, yeah, but I live right down the street. Can I go get a change of clothes? And I'm thinking in my mind, like, oh, he might be kind of hesitating. I was like, well, yeah, we'll be here. So we leaving, getting ready to go home. Who meets me right at the fountain? This brother meets me at that fountain in Marion Square. I jump in the water. I jump in the water. You should have seen that. I got some pictures on Facebook. Jump in the water. The young man jumps in the water with me. I baptize this young man who was just hours before, not even a believer that there's a God who now takes on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ through water baptism into his death. Can God, can God bring anything good out of this? Yes. Yes, sir. Father, in the name of your son, Jesus Christ. Oh, multiplication. Father, I thank you for being for being the one that has pulled us out of darkness into your marvelous light, Lord God. Father, I'm asking you that you would saturate your people with thoughts that are nothing less than themselves. That you would show them when they spend time with you not only who you are, but who they are. Lord, I stir a pivot right now. I, I put them on the pivotal, the pivotal moment of their life. I place them in the name of Jesus into a pivot that they would enter into your joy, your peace. Ah, God, I feel in the name of Jesus Christ that you are pushing people into their purpose now. I declare from the youngest to the oldest the purpose of God manifested in your life in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord God, Lord God, as we leave this place, Lord, I ask that you minister to them deeply. And Lord, when we come back next Sunday for Resurrection Sunday, 
Hallelujah. For you. When we come out this Wednesday for prayer, when we come out Friday for women's prayer, when we get back together Your Sunday, when we're at the gospel fest and wherever we go from this day forward, we are going to walk in the vision of who you called us to be. Give them a clear vision of who oh. they are in you. Yeah. Yeah. Baptize them with the Holy Ghost and let your glory be manifested in their lives. In Jesus' name. We pray. Let the church shout amen. amen. We thank God for all of you. Look at the young man right here clapping. Hey, you better praise him, son. We thank God for all of you this morning. Thank you for hanging out for a few extra minutes. All right, just know that when we take two weeks vacation, this is what happens. We do go longer in church that following Sunday. Okay, just come prepared with some Gatorade next time. You know. All right. But Brother Reed, see, we still follow some protocol in here. So what Brother Reed will do in the back is row by row. We exit one row at a time. So just hold your horses. Let him give you direction. And um, thank you so much. There's some coffee out there. If anybody wants to make a cup of coffee on your way out, you can do so. I'm so delighted to see you. Love you so much. We will see you on Wednesday.